he was the lucky one to um, to contact make contact with the A. So basically, the information that we presented to the students a few days ago was uh, cell phones have been linked with tumors of the brain, the ear, and the eye, pregnant um, uh, pro behavioral problems in women who are pregnant, and uh, problems with sperm leading to infertility. One of the things we didn't have time to mention because we had very short presentations was electro-hypersensitivity. And this is probably the thing I'm most passionate about. I talk to people almost on a daily basis. I get email from people on a daily basis who have developed a sensitivity to electromagnetic energy and their lives have been very seriously, seriously affected. They're not dying of brain tumors, and they're not having difficulty reproducing, but their lives have, the quality of their lives has really diminished uh, because of their exposure to this energy. And what I'm going to do is share with you some of the research I've done and um, uh, regarding electrohypersensitivity and try to convince you that this is really a very serious and growing problem in our society. In 2004, the World Health Organization held a conference on electrohypersensitivity in Prague, and I was fortunate enough to attend that particular meeting. And this is their de definition of electrohypersensitivity. A phenomenon where individuals experience adverse health effects while using or being in the vicinity of devices emanating electric, magnetic, or electromagnetic fields. They go on to say, Whatever its cause, EHS is a real and sometimes a debilitating problem for the affected persons. Their exposures are generally several orders of magnitude under the limits of internationally accepted standards. In Canada, uh, Health Canada is responsible for setting the guidelines, just like the Federal Communication Commission is responsible here for setting guidelines to um, microwave radiation. And in Canada, they've made a concession. They say that certain members of the general public may be more susceptible to harm from radio frequency and microwave uh, exposure. So they're beginning to recognize that not all of us have the same sensitivity to this energy. However, they haven't done much to change the guidelines. When we talk about symptoms of electrical hypersensitivity, they include uh, the nervous system, uh, they include the heart, the respiratory system, the skin, um, the eyes, and various other things, including uh, digestive uh, problems. So the symptoms really vary from individual to individual, depending on what your most sensitive um, reaction is. The weakest, the weakest chain, uh, link in your chain, is probably what's going to be affected uh, by this form of exposure. There was a letter written uh, by Holberg and uh, Oberfeld in 2006, and this, uh, they basically looked at a variety of studies to find out what is the prevalence of electrical hypersensitivity in our society. And you can see here that um, in 1985, the percentage was very, very low. And it doesn't matter which country we're talking about, the prevalence seems to be increasing. So the percentage of people who claim to be electrically hypersensitive is increasing. We don't know if that's due to a true increase in society or whether it's, it's due to an awareness of the issue. And some people who think they're electrically hyper, hypersensitive may not be. We don't have any diagnostic tests as yet uh, to determine your electrical sensitivity. Um, by 2017, they estimate that 50% of the population will have the symptoms of electrohypersensitivity. And this is uh, just a few years down the road. I use a very conservative estimate. I use 3% uh, for severe electrohypersensitivity. And so when I'm asked how many people are likely to be affected, there's really a gradient. At the low end of the scale here, um, where we have uh, severe symptoms, uh, my number, the number I use, is about 3%. And I, that may not be the right number. Um, about 35%, I think, are moderately sensitive, and that's based on studies that we've done in a school environment looking at teachers, so it may not apply to the general population. And possibly as much as 50% are already experiencing mild symptoms of sensitivity. And if we take these numbers and extend them to the Canadian and American population, what we're really talking about here in the United States of severe sensitivity is probably uh, close to 10 million people. And if we believe the 35% number for moderately sensitive, we're talking about a third of the population, or about 100 million people. That's why I think electrohypersensitivity is probably the most serious health um, uh, event that we're, we're uh, experiencing in North America. 
And when I tell people, you know, why is this becoming a problem? Well, one of the reasons it's becoming more of a problem is because our exposures are increasing. And I use the flood analogy. If um, the level of water is very low, uh, it's probably not going to do any of us too much damage. Once the level goes over our heads, there's only so long that we can tread water before we go under. And I think this is what's coming. The levels are simply going higher and higher and higher, and a greater population is being submersed um, in this energy. And if we look at why this is a problem, we have over 4 billion cell phone users in the world today. Uh, when I talked to the school environment, I was trying to make the point that there's a, a very uh, close similarity between cigarette smoking and using a cell phone in that cigarette smoking has been linked to lung disease, heart disease, uh, cell phones have been linked to various tumors. Well, we, didn't, we never had 4 billion people on the planet smoking, but we have 4 billion cell phone users. Each of these cell phones uh, requires antennas, so we're putting up more and more antennas into communities, and I know that's one of the issues that you're dealing with today. There's also something known as Wi-Fi and WiMAX. WiMAX is, um, has a radius of 30 miles, so you can put up an antenna that's incredibly powerful uh, just so that we can have good reception uh, with our computers and with our cell phones. We also are beginning to put more and more wireless technology into school environments, and I think this is a, a very, very serious mistake, particularly in elementary schools uh, where you have young children who are still developing who are extremely sensitive to any kind of uh, potential toxic in the environment. There's also something known as smart meters. These are meters that being, are being placed on houses uh, and buildings. They record the amount of electricity you use, and they send that information very often in a wireless fashion back to the utility so that they can price you differentially depending on what time of day you're using it. People who are electrically sensitive who have had smart meters placed on their homes uh, find that they can't use the room uh, immediately adjacent to where that smart meter is because they've simply developed um, too, too strong a reaction to the radiation. There's also something known as broadband over power lines that's being used and proposed for a number of communities. And we have evidence that that is probably going to make a lot of people sick very, very quickly. And it will take some time for the medical community to recognize what the illness is because um, the illnesses are really so general. Compact fluorescent light bulbs, we're being asked to use energy efficient light bulbs. The most affordable ones are the compact fluorescents, uh, and they're making people sick as well. And I'm going to show you some evidence of that in a little while. And then finally, there is something called wireless electricity um, that's being uh, tested as we speak uh, with the hope that you know, it will come into more and more homes. So we're re really relying on this technology to a degree that's causing our exposure to be, in we're being inundated with it, just like the flood. And the question is, um, where is Noah's Ark? How are we going to protect the people who have developed sensitivity? And how are we going to protect the rest of us who are not yet electrically sensitive? And I think that's a very serious question to uh, try to address. This is a study that was done in Spain in 2001, and I use it because I think it really clearly uh, documents what happens to people who live near antennas. And I'm just going to describe this uh, graph for you. What we have here on the x-axis are the percentage of people who responded to a questionnaire saying that they experience different symptoms very often. So these are the, the percentage of people who experience symptoms very often. Everything in red uh, are people who lived within 10 meters or 30 feet of an antenna, all the way out to 300 meters um, or 900 feet from an antenna. And the first symptom here that you have is fatigue. And you can see here that approximately 70% of those who lived within 10 meters of an antenna experienced fatigue very often, all the way down to about 27% down here in black. So you've got a huge change in these symptoms, the percentage of symptoms. And these are the symptoms in, in uh, decreasing order. So we have fatigue, sleep disturbance, headaches, feelings of discomfort, uh, depression, memory loss, um, skin problems, cardiovascular problems, all the way down to uh, nausea, which down here would be the very last one on the scale, and there might not be any difference here at all between um, those who lived close and far. Everything in red, on this, um, in this box are things that we begin to experience as we age. 
And so I prefer not to call this electro-hypersensitivity. I prefer to call this rapid aging syndrome because that's what it seems to be. Um, those are the symptoms. And very often when you talk to people who have developed these symptoms, their explanation is, well, I'm leading a very stressful lifestyle or, well, I'm just getting older and it's normal for me to have difficulty sleeping. It's normal for me to have aches and pains. It's normal for me not to think clearly anymore because I'm aging and, and that's wrong. Because when these individuals go into an electromagnetically clean environment, those symptoms disappear. And if it's due to aging, they shouldn't disappear.